have, have you done this kind of thing before, gone into a season with two quarterbacks and sort of let it play out in the games as opposed to just practice? Yeah, actually twice. Um, you know, 18 at Boston State, um, we actually had um, two vet quarterbacks. We didn't name a starter. And um, one actually left right before camp started. And later on, a year later, he ended up winning the D2 Heisman. Um, and then we ended up having um, the guy who ended up being the backup that year um, end up winning the, you know, um, GSC Player of the Year in D2. So, um, you know, I've done it before. And then obviously, um, you know, last year at Western Carolina, actually, um, going into the first game, you know, we didn't name a starter. Um, you know, we played both. And then, um, you know, the guy that played the best in the system and, and um, in live action is the guy we went with. That was telling us that, that Eli's really caught up here over the last week or so. What has he done to really improve and make this a dead heat? Well, I think the first thing is he got healthy. You know, um, you know, he was struggling, moving around in spring, you know, because the hamstring. Um, but also, you know, as a young guy, um, you know, he's very mature. You know, um, and I think that's because of Nate. You know, Nate's a very mature guy, man. Nate's a pro. So, um, you know, if he wanted to compete for the job, he would have to attack every day like a coach, and like a pro. And um, that's really what's caught him up. You know, you don't see a lot of young guys his age coming with the mentality of, you know, just, hey, I got to work just as hard. I got to put, put, put the work in. I got to be up here watching film and studying. And um, I think that's kind of what you know got him caught up because you know he was a little bit behind and went home after spring ball. How, how have you seen the offensive lineman adjust to this faster paced scheme? And uh, you know, because I know when I talked to Coach Barbo on media day, he said uh, when he's recruiting with you, you guys would would recruit fast and athletic guys and put weight on and play offensive line. And obviously, these guys are recruiting for a pro style. So how have you seen them develop? Yeah, it's just a totally different um, game, you know. Like last year, obviously, um, more huddle, um, you know. Um, when we got here, we had to get the guys' weight down. I mean, we had a lot of guys that were overweight and, and um, not just overweight, but the type of game run, you know, came, we, they played last year was, hey, you know, um, huddle, you know, 20, 30 seconds, and then come off the football downhill, right? Um, so I think when we first got here, it was tough because, you know, it's different, man, when you're, you got a chance to, you know, you just snap the ball in seven seconds, you know, um, seven to, you know, 15 seconds at any time, you know? So, um, but you know what? They work their butts off. I mean, you look, look, look at a lot of guys that change their bodies into what we want. Um, being athletic, being twitchy, being able to um, get in your stance fast and, and not, you know, and not take a deep breath, right? Um, you know, those guys have really put the work in. And then, and all it's done is it's just now made us where um, our tempo is so much better from spring. I mean, you look at our just when we want to go fast, like our center is bam, he's on the ball, he's making the call. If the linemen are getting in their stance. Um, they're not, you know, wobbling around, you know, um, because they're not used to it. Now they know the expectation of when the ball's supposed to get snapped when we do want to go fast. And so, um, but, you know, we got good leadership in that room, you know. You got Branson, who's a senior. Jacoby, who hasn't played much um, because he was hurt last year, but he played a lot on the, on the 21 team when they won um, here, you know. Um, you know, those guys are great leaders, you know. And then I think Cooper's became a great leader since he's taken over the, the, the center job. So um, they're, they work their butts off. You know, linemen don't say much. So um, I enjoy being around those guys. Was seven seconds ago like a record you know, for you guys to run these kind of offense? No, um, you know, the goal, you know, look at the fastest teams in the country, you know, like last year, obviously, you know, um, the, the USS, the Tennessees, um, some of the teams around the country, the array teams, the, the up-tempo vertical option teams, um, they average around 20 seconds per snap when you add in third downs and all the situational football for a minute, right? Um, basically, every, you know, they average around 20 seconds per snap. But if you look at when they snap the fastest, um, you want to be able to snap the ball in seven seconds, you know, or less. That's kind of the goal. Here. Um, yeah, and we and we'll have clips. You know, we keep up every day. Um, we have someone keeping the time of how many clip, how many times do we snap the ball seven seconds or less? How many times do we snap it fifteen seconds or less, or twelve seconds or less, right? And then how many times do we snap it twenty three seconds or less, right? So we keep up with a percentage of, you know, hey, are we snapping the ball sixty percent of the time at this this speed? Are we still snapping it, you know, fifty percent this day, forty percent? And sometimes it depends on red zone or third downs, right, if it's going to go, you know, if we're going to take a little bit longer, go a little bit faster, right? So, um, you know, we're always trying to keep up and always trying to push the, push the point on that, you know? If I asked you what percentage was the highest, would that be revealing too much information? Yeah, yeah, I don't want to say that, you know. Um, and to me, you know, you'll watch us play, you know, some games we'll play really, really fast and some games we'll play, you know, fast and some games we'll play medium and some games we might, you know, do more different stuff, you know. Um, it all depends on how can we score points, right? Like, I'm not this type of coach. I grew up in a, my dad played, like I said, professional football. I grew up in a pro high household. I love NFL football, right? So I grew up in the point of, hey, how efficiently can we score points, right? And um, I'm not one of these guys, hey, we have to get 90 snaps a game. If we don't get 90 snaps a game, it's not good enough, you know? Um, I want to be a guy who, hey, what do we, what do we, what do we got to do to put the players in position that week to win the game and score points? And um, I think that's something that I've always kind of, you know, built, built, built on, and I, I make sure I, I'm game playing the, the right way to do that. What's your biggest fear? 
Biggest fear? Um, any offense, I think any team is staying healthy. You know, um, you know when you when you have a great year, man, usually you're healthy, right? You stay healthy. Um, like an 18 one ounce championship, man. Um, we had one starter out at skill position for three or four games, and we had a one lineman out um, for two games, right? We played 14 games. You know, we were a healthy team. Our best players were on the field, um, guys that can make an impact, you know? Um, you look at last year at Western Carolina, um, the first seven games, I mean, we were, you know, leading the country in, in rushing and passing at one point. Um, and we were super explosive, and we just had some, you know, we had some, 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 some crazy injuries, you know? That kind of hurt us up front, and then Desmond obviously being out, you know, he was leading the country in rushing after his first seven games. And then, um, you know, he was out for four weeks. So, um, you know, we just got, you know, stay healthy. And um, and if we do that, man, I feel good about our guys. What about execution-wise, what's your biggest fear? Yeah, you know, um, obviously, you know, it's new, right? Um, it's new, and, um, you know, you want, you want perfection. That's what we're striving for every day, right? Um, you know, under, I think the biggest thing is understanding, you know, what I want in games when it comes to, um, you know, um, attacking defenses and what the expectation is for certain plays, right? Like when I'm game planning certain plays, what I want the quarterback to do. Um, you know, same thing with the offensive line. Like when we call certain protections, what we're trying to get accomplished in that protection. Or same thing with the run game and RPOs. Like what are we trying to get it done, right? Like can we go out there and um, make adjustments, right? Like I think um, football's changed a lot. I think a lot of DCs are like office coordinators now. It's not like the old days where, you know, you line up and you get the same defenses, you know, like DCs these days are young guys and they do a lot of creative things and sometimes they don't even do what they do on film, you know, you know they're game planning to you. So for me, you know, um, I think the biggest thing for us is like with this roster, you know, how fast can we adjust and make an adjustment after the first or second drop, right? Let's not wait till halftime. You know, now we have the iPads, which are awesome. Um, how much faster can we make adjustments and get into the right plays or get into the right tempo um, to have success? And I think that's a one of those things about to being consistent, you got to be able to make adjustments, you know. You spoke on Cooper winning the starting job at center. What allowed him to separate himself from Terrence Ford? Um, I think the one thing about Cooper is he's just nasty, man. You know, he's, he's got some prick to him, um, you know, and he can move. You know, he's very athletic. Um, our center has to do a lot of things. Um, he's got to be able to move. And, and Timo's gotten a lot better, man. You know, he's, he's worked his butt off. He's been in the meeting rooms, man. Um, he knows basically every position, too. Um, and but you know I think Cooper just has a lot of juice you know and um, and I think you know he can he can do some things athletically that we really like. Okay, when I watch your offense, I see uh, in the past years I've seen running backs used in so many various ways. Yeah. As far as catching the ball, how Desmond's a guy that's used to it, right? Yeah. How has got how, how have guys like Rodney and Derek taken on learning that part of it? And how has Desmond led them in learning that in learning that part of the game? Yeah, um, I think that's a big part of it, you know. I think um, that's one of the biggest things. You know, run plays are run plays, you know. Um, blocking schemes are blocking schemes. But having Desmond here, you know, teaching, helping teach the passing game, you know, like understand the pass concepts, not just run concepts, right? Um, and understand what we're looking for when we're reading. Because, you know, like we're, we're going to coach our butt off and we're going to be detailed. Like, you know, our running backs, we teach them read coverages and read leverage. Like, we're not just out there running routes, you know. Uh, we're trying to develop them for the next level, right? Um, so guys like Rodney, I think he's a three-down back. You know, like I think he's a guy who – who can catch out of the backfield. Um, he blocks well in protection. Like, he's a guy who can do all three, too, right? Um, the guy that's really gotten so much better since January is Derek Davis. Um, you know, he was more just a downhill, straight line, you know, big, fast guy. Um, but you talk, talk about a guy in the summer that's worked on catching the football, worked on running routes on the backfield. I mean, he's been very consistent in that stuff. And, um, and he's also a very smart kid. So he pays attention, um, he, he, he takes really good notes, and he, he knows exactly what we want to do in the pass game, which is good. So, But, you know, to me, right, like I might call, you know, the game might be a little different who's in the game, right? Um, I got to play to our guys' strengths, right? Like Rodney and Dez are different. You know, Dez and Derek are different. You know, Rodney and Derek are different, right? So, hey, what have they done well in camp? What plays they like, which one plays they like, which pass game, what they do in the pass game, right? Like I got to call the game for our players, not for me. The, uh, I know that Rodney and Dez are your two official starters with the Oars next. So, how close is Derek to being in that in that mix, like as far as distribution of how much you use in all three of them? Yeah, I mean, we've always played multiple backs. You know, we have to with our tempo, um, and just you know, to me, you know, when it comes down to it, too, is is um, you want to keep guys fresh, man. Like running back, y'all know how even in the NFL, right? Like they don't get paid a lot, right? Um, you know, it's, it's a position where you got to keep guys fresh, you got to keep guys healthy. And if we're going to play a 12-game 12, you know, 12 season, man, like we want running backs that run just as hard as they were week one as they are, you know, week 12. So, um, you know, Derek's right there, man. I mean, he's, he's going to be a guy who, who's going to be on the field, you know. Uh, we've played, even last year and in, in, in years past, we've played around two to three backs every game. Um, and, and that's the goal, right, is and get them touches and get them in, in the, the right situation, right? Like when they're in the game, uh, what's the best things they do well? This is the first time you've had to translate your scheme yeah. What kind of has to happen when you take a level up, take a leap up to keep the to hit the ground running? 
I think the number one thing is um, I think skilled players are skilled players. You know, I think there's – I mean, if you look at, you know, just – just football in general, right? Like, you know, you got guys that can run, right? You got long guys that can make plays down the field in 50-50 balls, right? Um, you know, the size is different, obviously, at the skill players. But to me, you know, if you look at the NFL and look at, you know, guys that make professional football, there's a lot of um, shorter guys that played at smaller levels, whether it's group of five, whether it's FCS, um, that play receiver and running back, right? Um, you know, if you look at the rosters. But um, to me, the difference is up front. Right, like I think um, for us to be a, a, a explosive and a very efficient offense, where hey, we're standing good down distance on first and second downs, like we got to control the line of scrimmage. So you know we got to find ways to run the football with success, put our linemen in position where they do well, and then also like you know the pass rushers, man, you're playing some werewolves at this level, right? And D linemen are you know first, second, third, you know round pick guys, man. You know we play some really good teams. So um, how do we help our line out, right? Like I'm not the type of coach where it's like, hey, man, he just got beat. You know, hey, you just got to win your one on one. You know, like. Hey, yes, guess what? We expect our guys to win our one-on-ones, right? But sometimes we have to do a good job as coaches of helping them win their one-on-one. And so protection-wise, we got to find a way to keep the quarterback clean. Because me playing quarterback back in the day, man, you know, when I got hit a lot, I didn't play very good, right? Um, and when I didn't get hit a lot, I played very well. So, um, you know, I kind of understand that. You know, if we can keep the quarterback clean and, and find ways to get the ball out of his hand quicker, you know, and not hold on to it, um, you know, and, and take hits, we're going to play a lot better on offense. Well, the quarterback situation being so competitive, I'll ask Nate, I think they handled it really well. You know, um, the one thing I like about them is they actually have a good relationship, you know, in the meeting rooms and on the field, um, you know, and they're competitive, right? Like, it doesn't matter if it's individual. It doesn't matter if it's Skelly, you know, routes on there. Like, they're very competitive. They love to see the numbers every day. They love to see the completion percentage, right? And I keep up with everything, right? Like, I think that stuff matters, you know? Like, you got to keep up with who's the most consistent, right? And, um, and I think they, like I said, they're both pros. They both are competitive, and they both want to play. So um, I'm, I'm excited to see what they do on Saturday. How um, terms of their skill sets, how, how different are they? Do they kind of bring different things to the table? Yeah, I mean, they, they bring a little bit different things. You know, um, you know, they both do things really well, and they both things that they have to work on, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think Nate is a, is a pro in the playbook. I think he has a, um, a good feel of, um, you know, the offense. And, um, and when he has a good pocket man, he, he throws a nice ball, and he can anticipate throws. You saw that last year, right? Um, and then Eli, you know, is a guy who makes some plays, and, um, and um, he also has a, a good feel for what's going on and gets the ball of his hands, right? So, um, you know, both of them mentally are really good, which is what I like. Um, they both understand the system. They understand – they're starting to really understand what I want, right? Um, where I want the ball to go, what the expectation is in blitz and not blitz, right? And so, um, you know, that's the biggest thing is I think that's where they're really similar is, is the mental part. How um, important is that competitive edge for no matter what quarterback you throw out there to lead the team? Yeah, I think, you know, I think it's a good thing, you know. Um, you know, I know it's first game of the year, you know, um, but, you know, like I think um, competing matters, you know, like going in front of stands and playing in this offense. It's a different offense, right, than we've that has been here in the past, right? Like who can go out there? Um, on Saturday and I'll lead the team down the field, right? It's not the guy who throws for the most yards or, or has, you know, the biggest plays, right? It's like who can, who can we call it, be a, um, a first down maker, right? Lamar Jackson, right? Like if you look at Lamar Jackson, like people talk, but he, he gains first downs, right? You look at us at Western Carolina last year, really the last two years, we were the number one in, in the country in first downs gained, right? So like I want to see them go out and compete, but I want to see them gain first downs, right? Move the chains, right? I want quarterbacks that move the chains. Because if we move the chains and get first downs, we're going to score points, right? Um, so that's, you know, that's what we're looking for compared-wise. Monte Montfield is one of your captains. What have you seen from him throughout this offseason to develop into that type of leader? Um, he's been awesome, you know. Um, you know, he's a guy who has a, who's high expectations for himself. Um, he has high goals. He wants to be a, a, you know, a day one, day two pick. He wants to uh, play in the NFL, right? He doesn't want to just play. He wants to be a great player. And so, um, you know, it's been very good, you know. Um, he's been at, you know, um, Akron, and then he's been here with basically two different coordinators, I believe, or no, no, he's been here but since, well, now two different coordinators. But, you know, biggest thing with him is we had to gain his trust. You know, he's a senior. It's his last year. He wants to have a great year. And, um, and I think he was very open, and we had a lot of open dialogue of things that he thought was good last year and not good last year and things that I can do to get everybody connected, right? Because um, one of our biggest words that we have this year in office is trust. Right, like if we're going to be a great offense and be efficient, we have to trust each other. Whether it's the quarterback, O line, or coaches, receivers, right? And we have to trust everybody's going to do their job. And he's been a great person, really, the last since summer, really preaching that, right? Being unselfish, being a guy who's happy for his teammates if someone else catches a touchdown, right? Just being a great leader and understand, hey, when my ball comes my way, I'm going to make plays. Another one of those guys that's been been here longer than not day, and one of the big pieces of this offense, Gavin. Um, yeah. How important is he going to be to this offense? 
very important. I mean, we, I call tight ends a unicorn, man. You know, tight ends are guys now with the way the NFL is and the way, you know, they're starting to develop. Former quarterbacks, former receivers, former athletes, like Gavin's a guy who um, you got to move around and find ways to, to get him involved, right? And then also use him to get other guys open, right? Uh, we just have to do a good job of, of um, understanding what his strengths and weaknesses are and um, getting him the ball in certain situations. But um, he's awesome, man. He plays hard. Um, he attacks every day. Um, he just brings the right mentality, and um, he's you know he's one of the leaders of our offense. I mean, that's why he's voted captain. You were a four-year starter, right? Yes, sir. Yep. Do you ever have this quarterback question over your head when you were in training camp? Yeah, you know, actually, on my first year starting, um, I was the backup. I was getting a lot of second string reps all camp. Um, I remember my first game. Um, uh, I was you know I ended up getting um, starting that game, but we actually rotated every quarter. Um, we rotated every quarter of that game. Um, I ended up playing the best. And um, I ended up being the star the next week and ended up playing really well my rest of freshman year. Um, and you're always competing, man. You know, my, my rest of sophomore year, I played really good early in the year. I had a, 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 a apodectomy, appendix taken out, right? And I missed three games, three or four games. And um, I had a backup come in that was a transfer that lit it up, man, for a game. You know, you're, you know, you're as a quarterback, hey, you know, you want to come back and play well. And, um, and obviously, I got a chance to come back and play really well and had a good year. So, you know, you're always competing. You're always finding ways to get better. And um, you know, and I think it matters. So you know, what been through that? What's been your message to the um, I think it, all it does is teaches you how to um, persevere, right? Um, you know, I want practice to be hard. You know, I'm a coach. I'm a coach. I'm hard now. I'm I'm on, I'm on them every day to be perfect. You know, um, I, that's my expectation. You know, our expectation here is not to, to just be a good quarterback. It's to be an all conference quarterback. It's to you know get drafted. You know, that, this is what Pitt is, right? We've had great good quarterbacks here, right? So um, you know, there's the expectation here. And, um, and I'm gonna push them, and I want them to be mentally tough. You know, like, we have to be mentally tough if we're gonna win, you know, make the AC Championship and have a chance to get in the playoffs, right? Like, quarterback's gotta be a mentally tough position. So if you can handle practice, if you can handle competition, if you can handle when things aren't always going good and make other players play better, we're gonna be a better team. Gabe, okay, what have you seen up to this point that gives you confidence that they trust each other, that they're ready for Saturday? Um, I just think, you know, look at the last scrimmage. You know, like, really, if you think about the last scrimmage, man, the first scrimmage, you know, we didn't have a lot of trust. You know, we had some um, um, pre-snap penalties going on. Um, once we had that, you know, I feel like um, we, we didn't find a way to, to, hey, figure it out, right? Um, when things bad things happen, we have to figure it out. Does that make sense? Um, and if you look at the second scrimmage, man, from the beginning, and, and when we did have some adversity through the middle of the scrimmage, when the defense started fighting back, right, um, you know, we, we fought through that. We stayed together. It was great positivity. It was um, everybody cheering for each other. Our energy was great. And, um, and like they said, you know, a lot, I've heard a lot of people talk and, what, and kind of what the, the thought process is. We all know on this side of the ball, if we play consistent, if we play hard and we play physical and we do our job, we can be a really good offense. And we show that in practice versus a really good defense. So when we, we do those things, we can be consistent. I think the players are starting to see that now because they've seen us go against a really good defense and have a lot of success. How has Kenny gone to uh, practice Kenny, um, you know, Kenny, Kenny's a guy who, um, you know, he's actually been out really most of camp, man. He's kind of been back and forth with the injury. And um, really this last week is when we really got him back fully healthy. Um, so, you know, for him, it's just been mental, you know, making sure that he's studying and knowing what's going on. He's been very much of a pro when it comes to taking, you know, getting his body back right after the injury with a hammy and, um, and obviously um, watching film. And so um, coming back this week, he's been very good knowing what to do, um, focusing. Um, he's a guy who he's still young, you know, like as much as he, you know, we want him to be that, you know, that NFL draft pick. He has the ability to do that. I really believe that. I really think he can be an NFL draft pick and play the next level. Um, but he's still young, and, and he has to get reps, and he, has, and he has still has a long way to go. I think Kenny's the type of guy who, man, by the end of the season, man, if, he, if as long as he stays healthy and he's practicing and um, being efficient, he's going to have a great year. You said when you were a oh, freshman in a quarterback competition, it was you went drive or a quarter by quarter uh, back and forth. We, we have kind of a similar specific plan this week, uh, this weekend with Dane Eli. Um, me and coaches have a have kind of have a um, dialogue. You know, we're always open, man. You know, we've talked about the quarterbacks probably every other day during camp. You know, we're always meeting, always, um, you know, we talk about stats, talk about what we saw on film. Um, you know, we're very open to everything. Um, we haven't determined that yet. You know, we still have one more practice. Um, you know, like I said, this week has been big, you know, seeing how they handle the game plan, see how they handle the team when they're out there, um, seeing who's very efficient. And, um, and, you know, and that's what we're going to do. You know, once we get to game time, we'll, we'll get close and we'll kind of have an idea how we want to do it.